Hi, uh, this is Neil Shah from Counterpoint Research, uh, and welcome to Counterpoint Conversations. Uh, we have a very special guest here with us, Mark Granger. Uh, he uh, is senior director, product management for automotive, and he leads the digital cockpit for automotive. And a lot of fanfare here with respect to the new platforms. And uh, actually, we are in at Snapdragon Summit in a beautiful Maui, and. Uh, I would like to deep dive on what Qualcomm has announced here and uh, how the evolution of the overall uh, digital cockpit as well as uh, the overall digital chassis for Snapdragon uh, for automotive has come to the fore. Mark, how do you see the evolution of digital cockpit mm -hmm. right, in the industry? Uh, you have been in this industry for decades and mm -hmm. if you can shed some light on how we are going from a cockpit to digital cockpit, I know you are more of an AM, FM radio guy. But. <laughs> That's right. You, you stole my thunder, right? Uh, but first off, thanks for having me here and uh, wish you all could have been here in, in Maui with us. Um, and yeah, to get to your, to your question, right? Um, you know, picking up on your reference, if you take a look, I have a 1957 Corvette, zero transistors, AM radio, okay? <laughs> so I can tell you the whole evolution um, to the digital cockpit and what we're announcing here today and whatnot. But if you really look over the last, you know, 10 to 15 years, um, you know, think about it. Um, a 15 year old car, I've got a 2011 BMW M3. I love the car, uh, but you know, the infotainment is actually my ashtray that happens to hold my phone very well, <laughs> right? Um, there's literally no uh, infotainment, just, you know, a 13 year old cop, right? Um, to today, uh, as far as consumers go, they, they expect um, in no matter what price point, mm -hmm. um, a digital experience, right? Yeah. Um, of course, where we, we have excelled is bringing those premium experiences, um, but also by the way, bringing more and more capability to our platforms. Um, which allow the OEMs to both innovate and reduce their overall cost by eliminating boxes and, and whatnot. Yeah. And so what you re result in is this, this, this cockpit, the, the cluster, the infotainment, perhaps multiple seat uh, displays and whatnot into just this seamless, fluid uh, thing back and forth, and your kid wants to show you his latest game achievement. He can flick it up to the passenger screen, wow. uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, to me, that's that's where we're kind of at and where we're going. Um, and yeah, it's great. When you talk about uh, digital experience within a cockpit, mm -hmm. so is it just limited to a digital twin of the entire sensors uh, and the overall driving experience? Uh, or it is more than that. It, there is infotainment piece to it as well. You know, the sensor data and 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 everything else is so important, right? Um, you know, we started in the infotainment space where you really just had that center stack and and the cluster, um, just really only ha mainly having menus and whatnot. But then, as you mentioned, bringing in the feeds from uh, driver monitoring cameras, occupancy monitoring, at first really just a function. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but now with these sensors and whatnot, you can leverage that to bring so-called multimodality mm -hmm. into the experience. Right. So, for instance, um, you can use the camera feed either inside to figure out what's going on inside the cabin or even on the outside um, to relay information and context to the computer. Right. Right. Which is then able to. Um, process and and either bring stunning visuals or you know pertinent information right um, as well it can partner with mm. the, the ADAS system mm. to be giving you very apparent warnings right uh, to drive the safety up as well Correct. so um, you know it's it's super exciting space to be in today absolutely and all of this stems the digitalization of cockpit right it stems from how vehicle is also changing and transforming from uh, to a more software defined vehicle mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and 
it is not possible uh, without a very strong silicon at the core, mm -hmm. right? And the software on top of it. Yep. So can you talk about that journey of Qualcomm? Uh, now we are in fifth generation, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. Right. So how that evolution has been uh, alongside the car evolution, right. and uh, what 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 do we have here in in terms of the new fifth generation as well? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, maybe picking up on the SDV thread for a second, sure. right? Um, if you take a look again, ten years ago, these these ECUs and whatnot were developed very separately by different teams, different OSs, uh, maybe five or ten different boxes, right? To do what we're kind of doing today in a single chip, right? right. And how does that tie to SDV? Well, it's the antithesis of uh, <laughs> that in that you've got all these little bits and pieces of software very hard to maintain mm -hmm. right so now you know that journey began with bringing more processing capability so that you can you know deliver more um experience on a single piece of silicon right you're able to access all this data it becomes a bit easier for people to develop and maintain software um but still we're in this phase where OTAs can can take a while and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. But with the, the SDV and this this whole cloud development um, infrastructure that mm -hmm. we're bringing, you can develop in the cloud, right? Um, test in the cloud, mm -hmm. and be very confident to bring that down as a as an OTA, perhaps just for a small little feature or whatnot. So the OEMs get to benefit from this by delighting their customers for years right. after that initial purchase. So um, that to me is where the SDV, especially in this cockpit context, um, is really exciting, exciting. right? Because right. we bring very powerful SOC with the Snapdragon Cockpit Elite, and you've got then the headroom mm. to continue to bring more and more and more features um, over the life of the vehicle. Right. And that increases more modernization opportunities for OEMs. At the same time, it also helps them save costs. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So that is uh, pretty good. So in terms of the Snapdragon Elite cockpit, mm -hmm. SOC, so what are the different building blocks or foundation building blocks for enabling these kind of experiences? Right. Well, so first off, we're super excited about bringing our Orion uh, CPU. Right. We first brought that into the, the Copilot uh, enabled PCs. Right. And now it's coming into automotive, right? Um, 3x the performance of uh, the, the previous generation uh, uh, Snapdragon. And ultimately, the CPU is still a, a core thing, especially for a cockpit, because you've got many disparate tasks. Correct. And that's what the CPU is an expert at mm -hmm. doing. Right. And with the expertise and the capability of this custom design ARM core, um, we can just advance the state of the art uh, immensely. Right. Right. You get to the GPU, which uh, talking about cockpit is a is a huge factor. Right? Absolutely. You've got to be able to deliver, you know, stunning visuals. And, you know, you can say stunning visuals. It's, it sounds like a buzzword. I suppose it is a buzzword. <laughs> but, you know. Having visuals that the user can very naturally understand intuitively, easily. Right. right? Um, by the way, you know, it brings a great point about our um, partnership uh, with Epic that we, we talked about on stage, right? right. And what they're doing. Yeah. And, and by leveraging what we deliver on that GPU uh, can really go far ahead, right? Some of the big news in terms of, of headline is on the MPU, and the neural processing unit, right? 12X our, our previous uh, cockpit uh, device. And uh, it, it's really key to, to enabling the next generation of, of experiences, right? right. Kind of already you know, touched on some so-called multimodal um, use cases, but right. really leveraging even the exterior camera feed to do things that are, are just amazing. You know, you're taking a, um, a trip, you see something interesting off of there, and you say, what is that? The computer comes back and says, oh, that's Mount Rushmore. Um, right. And maybe tells you a little bit of facts because it knows you're a history buff, right? Right. Um, so learning you being that 
that that personal digital assistant right um we see as being um you know key there the other thing um uh, is in audio um we're we're bringing a huge amount um of dedicated audio processing mm -hmm. um to the snapdragon cockpit elite such that you'll have unheard of uh, uh effects right these sound bubbles right inside the vehicle right uh you might be driving uh, perhaps doing a phone call, uh, your passengers perhaps doing a Zoom uh, right. on on uh, there, and you also got kids in the back, um, you know. And by the way, you know, of course, everyone's kids are great, right? But you know, sometimes they fight and yell, and you know, you're on that Zoom call, yeah. you don't want uh, your management to right. uh, to to know. Well, right. don't worry because the AI processing has mm -hmm. isolated. Um, all of that mm -hmm. to that zone. Your boss not going to know. So, uh, anyways, uh, you know some of the the great um, things that we think we can can enable. Um, yeah. With the. With I agree. The... Audio is such an underrated experience within the car. Yes. Right. And yeah. you listen to music, listen to like sports, right? Mm -hmm. And also now the multimedia part of it, right? right. In passenger seats and. Yeah, Zoom call and so. Forth. I I think um, if you get a chance, um, go sit. For instance, in the Mercedes that we have here, it has the uh, Dolby uh, Atmos uh, integrated into that uh, mm -hmm. sound system. And you know, I, uh, you know, I've got grown children now. Right, they've grown up in a MP3 uh, and beyond <laughs> era. Uh, you know, with small little um, right. things. So the car is one of the few places that people experience immersive yep. audio anymore. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, those sort of effects of the music flying all over you is exactly why we bring this performance into the chip. And it keeps you awake as well. While you're yeah. awake. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Good music always, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I, those are great foundation building blocks which can drive so many experiences, visual, audio, mm -hmm. and other uh, experiences. So if I can double click on the elephant in the room, which is AI mm -hmm. and Gen AI. So you talked about NPU. I saw at CES a lot of different experiences with Gen AI assistant you had at yeah, display, mm -hmm. right? So can you talk about what has changed since a previous generation now mm -hmm. in this platform for the elite experiences? What kind of Gen AI experiences we can see? I know there were some examples from your partners on the, sh at, on the stage, right. but if you can uh, explain like some case studies or what you're seeing well you know i think it, maybe I'll, I'll spend a, a minute or two um on the the ces experience right so we already showed and i think we we're a bit unique um in showing the ai on the edge meaning running on the silicon in the car it allows you to train a model uh to fully understand that vehicle mm -hmm. right give accurate answers mm -hmm. and also make sure that you're not delivering some uh, random uh, <laughs> uh, random data uh, ar around the vehicle right you know if i if i look uh, we had the the pleasure of of our partner lee auto uh, presenting right right um, they they showed a, a video where um, the the daughter asks the assistant to you know uh, draw uh, an a uh, a van gogh style right um uh, picture. picture right and it turns the whole landscape uh into a, a van gogh looking thing and then the little daughter says oh i want to learn how to paint as well right right so imagine these sorts of experiences right yeah um that you're able to do and by the way still continuing to render these beautiful displays render this perfect audio um and that's what's sort of key to our our automotive processing is not mm. just bringing 12x by the way 12x okay <laughs> so not just bringing 12x but being able to use the 3x cpu 12x all concurrently for a sustained period of time in a very you know reliable high quality uh, manner right so yeah. and also there was one uh, interesting demo at ces and i think you stuck, touched upon was personalization as mm -hmm. well there's a driver related personalization if i'm a driver if my wife is a driver then the entire environment changes right exactly exactly you know you can get in the car 
driver monitoring camera is used to identify mm -hmm. um, and authenticate, right? Uh, by the way, enabling, for instance, uh, secure payment uh, and secure access to various different um, accounts, but ultimately really understanding you, right? right? It will know that you take Johnny to school right. every day of the week and you play light rock. Mm. Um, and then it also remembers that when Johnny gets out of the car, you turn on Led Zeppelin and crank it up, <laughs> right? And it does this all without asking you because it right. knows you want to listen to Led Zeppelin on 11. So anyways, uh, you know, it's really so exciting what yeah, we can that's do. That's great. Uh, one last point which I wanted to get your thoughts on uh, is, which also came out on stage uh, with Rivian and Unreal Engine, the most requested feature was a very good navigation, a 3D maps or mm -hmm. more intuitive uh, experience of driving, right, for navigation. Can you talk about how you're working with different partners and enabling that stack for navigation and how it is deeply integrated within the association? Right. So, um, you know, obviously we're super happy to have uh, um, Rivian and, and Epic as well as you, you saw Great Wall Motors, Lee Auto, um, up on stage showing some of the just, you know, mind blowing things, um, that they're doing. But, you know, when, when you take a look at, you know, our device is not just, uh, uh, an SOC, right? right? Um, there's multiple layers of, of software and stack that, you know, we develop, we partner with people like Unreal Engine, get massive performance gains, by the way, right. for their uh, applications, which then the OEM brings even more um, stuff right. into, yeah. right? Um, you know, I think kind of pulling the thread on the, the software framework and whatnot, and back to the MPU, some of the partnership we announced with, uh, with Google mm -hmm. that will allow to bring even more, um, you know, edge AI uh, mm. into the cockpit is something that, uh, you know, we're super excited to, you know, get out the door um, very quickly, right? Right, so. That's brilliant. Last question, uh, it's just a wrap up question. What is right now your ideal car mm -hmm. uh, in terms of all, with entire Qualcomm stack and enabling most of those experiences right now? Can you give an example? I wouldn't say it, it would be a favorite, but <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I think um, you know, if I if I take a look, so I was, uh, um, you know, at the the auto show in China this year, right? Mm. And you go around and see all of these wonderful <laughs> Snapdragon uh, uh, powered cockpits, right? right? And uh, you know, one of the one of the most impressive ones. Uh, um, that I, I got to experience was, uh, for instance, a uh, uh, Xiaomi um, mm -hmm. SU7. Uh, SU7, right? Uh, looks surprisingly like a Porsche Taycan. Right. Um, really, I'll say sexy looking body. Right. Um, but the integration mm -hmm. that they've done uh, with, for instance, the smartphone uh, and the the cockpit uh, is is just amazing. Wow. Right. Um, you you talk to the assistant, ask it, uh, hey, can you contact uh, uh, Neil uh, and send him a pin? Um, you know, and it'll say, hmm, okay, let's see. Oh, Neil uses WeChat. Let me. Oh, and I don't have WeChat installed on the car, so let me go access the phone. Okay. And drop a, a pin. Wow. Uh -huh. Such deep, you know, Integrated. deep integration. That they've done, it's kind of kind of mind blowing. But you know, favorite cars. Oh, you know, I don't want to play any favorites. <laughs> right. uh, so uh, you know, I think all of these things are are just brilliant. That's great. Thank you very much, Mark. All right. Thank you, and thank you all. Thank you.